Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 69. In this video, we will discuss the extreme puzzle solving technique called jellyfish. As with all extreme techniques, a jellyfish is harder to learn and hard to use within a puzzle. This video has two prerequisite videos. The first is DX Sudoku training video number 9 on the X Wing, and the second is DX Sudoku training video number 38 on the Swordfish. This video has three parts. The first part is a review of the basic types of Sudoku fish techniques. And the second part is how to find a jellyfish in a Sudoku puzzle. And the third part is a set of practice exercises designed to help you master the jellyfish puzzle solving technique. There are three types of basic fish Sudoku techniques. The first basic fish is the X-Wing. An X-Wing is really a fish and not a wing. An X-Wing uses a single fish digit. In this example, the fish digit is the possible two candidate. An X-Wing is composed of four cells and involves two rows and two columns in its layout. The second basic fish is the swordfish. The swordfish is also uses a single fish digit. In this example of a swordfish, the possible three candidate is the fish digit. A swordfish is composed of six to nine cells and involves three rows and three columns in its layout. The third basic type of fish is the jellyfish. The jellyfish uses one single fish digit. In this example, the fish digit is the possible four candidate. A jellyfish is composed of eight to 16 cells and involves four rows and four columns. Next, we're going to demonstrate how to find a jellyfish within a Sudoku puzzle. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. We begin by highlighting all the cells having a possible one candidate. Next, we will cycle through all the rows and then all the columns looking for a jellyfish with the possible one candidates. We select row one as our first row in our current jellyfish search. Row one has two cells highlighted having a possible one candidate. These two cells will be our first two columns of our current jellyfish search. Next, we search for a second row to add to what we have so far. When we get to row four, we have two cells having a possible one candidate. The first cell lines up with the second column, and we add the second cell of row four to be the third column in our jellyfish pattern. We move to row five. Row five has three cells having a possible one candidate. The first two cells line up with the first and second columns. The third cell of row 5 will be used to create our fourth column of our current jellyfish search. Our current jellyfish pattern now has four columns. Next we add row 6 to our jellyfish pattern. Row 6 has three cells all lining up in our existing jellyfish columns. So now we have four rows and four columns. We have found a valid jellyfish pattern. The jellyfish pattern is now highlighted in green, and the kill zone is highlighted in red. But we discover there are no target candidates to kill in the kill zone. This jellyfish pattern has a horizontal orientation. The cells making up the jellyfish are along the rows, and the kill zone is aligned within the column cells. Just as with X-Wings and Swordfish, when the kill zone of a jellyfish does not have any target candidates, the same pattern will work in both directions. We currently have a horizontal orientation. Here is the same jellyfish pattern having a vertical orientation. As you can see, with a vertical orientation, the jellyfish cells are within columns and the kill zone occurs along the rows. We continue our search. All the twos have been filled out. We are currently showing all the cells having a possible three candidate highlighted. We start with row one as our first jellyfish row. We can't add row two as a second row because we would then end up with five columns. We can't add row three as our second row because we would also end up with five columns. Same with row four as our second jellyfish row. Again, we would end up with five columns. Next, we move to row six as the second row. And again, we end up with five columns. But when we add row seven as our second row, we now have four columns as shown. We can't add row 8 as our third row because we would end up with 5 columns. We can't add row 9 as our third row because we do not have enough rows left to complete a valid jellyfish pattern. From this point, we reset our second jellyfish row. We cannot make row 8 be our second jellyfish row because we do not have enough rows remaining to complete a valid jellyfish pattern. So we continue our search and make the second row 
the first row of our jellyfish pattern. Row two gives us three columns to use in our jellyfish pattern. We can't add row three as our second jellyfish row because we would end up with five columns. But we can add row four as our second jellyfish row, and we also can add our fourth and final column to our jellyfish pattern, as shown. We can add row six as the third row of our jellyfish pattern, and we can add row seven as the fourth and final row of our jellyfish pattern. We have found a valid jellyfish pattern in the puzzle composed of four rows and four columns. The first row has three cells, the second row has three cells, the third row also has three cells, and the fourth row has only two cells. We identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Since this jellyfish cells show up along rows and the kill zone is within columns, this jellyfish has a horizontal orientation. Before we remove the non-possible target candidates from our kill zone, let's consider the logic for how the jellyfish pattern works. If any cell in any row gets set, we end up with a valid swordfish or a hidden single X-wing combination. For example, if cell 2,2 gets set to a value of 3, we are left with this swordfish. Here we have a 3,2,2 type swordfish. We return back to our original jellyfish pattern. If cell 4,3 gets set, we have a hidden single in the house making up row 7. Once the hidden single is set, we are left with an X-Wing. We return back to our original jellyfish pattern. You can check the remaining cells to determine which ones create a swordfish and which ones create a hidden single X-Wing combination. So no matter what cells get set in the four rows making up the jellyfish, the result is the target candidates are either killed directly or the target candidates are killed by a swordfish or hidden single X-wing combination. The non-possible candidates are removed from the puzzle. Next, a jellyfish having a vertical orientation will be demonstrated. Consider the following jellyfish search in progress. All the cells having a possible 8 candidate are now highlighted. No jellyfish was found when searching the rows, so the jellyfish search continues using the columns instead of the rows. We discover a valid jellyfish in the four columns now highlighted. Because we started our jellyfish search with the two cells in column 1 and not the cells in a row, this jellyfish has a vertical orientation. When searching for a jellyfish having a vertical orientation, we start with a column and work our way right until we find three more additional matching columns. Also notice this jellyfish has two cells in the first column, two cells in the second column, two cells in the third column, and two cells in the fourth column. This jellyfish is known as a 4-2 type jellyfish. Just as with the 2-2-2 type swordfish, finding a 4-2 type jellyfish can be tricky. There are several 4-2 type jellyfish coming up next in the practice exercises. Time to test what you have learned. Please support the Exodoku. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. 
Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the jellyfish in the puzzle. Identify the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. This completes the Exodoku training video number 69. Thank you for watching.